Hi, I'm Casey Lackey for Innovative Sugarworks, and today I'm going to show you guys how to cover a round cake in fondant. So, a couple things you'll need for this. Um, fondant smoothers, at least two. I like these um, Ateco or Wilton fondant smoothers with a nice handle on the back. I also love this black guy. This is called a Smedger. It's by uh, Valerie White out of the UK, and it's got this fabulous 90 degree edge on the bottom, so you can make sure you get really nice, sharp edges on it. Always handy to have an acupuncture needle around. I got my flag so you don't lose it. And also you'll want your smoother sheets. These are the secrets to making really awesome clean cut wedding cakes. Love these guys. So, got my cake here. It's been cold carved and straight out of the fridge. I wanna make sure it's nice and hard still. If it starts to get soft, you'll lose your edge and the buttercream is more prone to break when you use a meringue. So I've got my fondant that I've rolled out already. I always transfer it to a large dowel to move it around because that way you avoid stretching it, getting finger holds and whatnot. It just makes it a lot easier to move a big piece around. I've rolled this out to um, just under an eighth of an inch. As you see, kind of roll it over. I always start covering my cakes by smoothing out all the air bubbles from the top. A lot of people panic with fondant and think, oh my god, I have to get attached as soon as possible, and they'll end up with a lot of air bubbles on the top or a lip that they don't want. I always say with fondant, you need to work with urgency, not panic. So you can see, I always try to make sure I get it nice and smoothed out. If I see an air bubble popping up there, I'll pop it now before I start moving to my sides. Because once you go to the sides, any air that's in the top, you've trapped it there. So always a good idea to try and get all of the air bubbles out of the top first. Sometimes they like to be difficult. And air bubbles happen, I don't care who you are. You could be the best wedding cake maker in the world and you will still get air bubbles. It's just part of making a cake. All right, so now that I've got this part done, I'm gonna start doing my sides. I'll attach that very, very top lip first Especially if you're doing a double barrel, or a, I like to call them super tiers, um, which are super tall. If you don't attach that edge first, it will start to pull and tear and crack. Um, and more or less depending on the brand of fondant you're using. I'm using the um, Karma fondant in this demo, but you know whatever you like to work with, there's no bad fondant. It's just like what people prefer. I prefer my Karma. And so then, as I'm working around, you notice I kind of gently pull out with my left hand. I'm right-handed. And I'm doing, I call it the tomahawk chop with my right hand. So I'm not going straight down. I'm actually pushing the air in kind of a diagonal motion like that. And then kind of gently fluffing. Almost, I always say, like, you're trying to cover a table. Imagine it's a piece of fabric that you want to really get in tight. That's how you get a nice, beautiful finish to the side. So you see, I'm keeping the left hand is pulling the fondant taut very gently. You don't want to rip it, but you definitely want to have that so it pulls out the wrinkles. I'll spin it around so you guys can see. You see, I'm being very deliberate with my motion. But still soft. It's uh, with with covering a cake and fondant and doing it well. It's just practice, 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 practice. But when you come to the end, that's where you tend to get the wrinkle and the dreaded wrinkle everybody hates is the idea of like, oh my god, I'm gonna have wrinkles and cracks at the base of my cake. That's what you don't want. To get rid of it, don't be afraid to just go fluff and pull the whole thing away. And then once again, gently pull out with your left hand, smooth with your right. And ta-da, there are no wrinkles on this cake. So then I always say, be Casey's fondant with her hands. I don't want to touch it with my bare hands after I've gotten it attached because fingerprints, leaving marks, uneven pressure. So I always go in it with two fondant smoothers after I get it attached. First go all the way down to the bottom. And then I actually make a 90 degree angle at the top to try and get as sharp of an edge as I can. Now with buttercream, you'll never get as sharp of an edge as you can with ganache. Ganache, you can sit there and push on it so hard. That's how you get that really sharp, I call it the Australian edge. 
you can get a really nice edge on meringue buttercream. I'm not a fan of using a crusting buttercream because I find that it always moves. It never stays hard. So you're always kind of fighting with the what's underneath. So the harder the foundation, the sharper the edge you can get. And once again, air bubbles happen. So I've got my air bubble there. You never want to pop the middle of the air bubble. Always pop it from the side. And this is where I start to use my sugar smoothers. These are way better for air bubbles than your fondant smoothers. Because you can really push around and you have control as to where you're forcing the air out of the bubble. Just like that. These are also great for really working to sharpen that edge because you can get, it's a smaller space than the fondant smoothers. And when you're going for a sharp edge, you always want to be pushing from the side up, never from the top out. If you push from the top out, you'll end up with that kind of weird lip crack thing. And anybody that's had it knows what I'm talking about. If you don't, keep working, you'll get it eventually one day and you'll be like, where did that come from? It's because you're pushing your fondant from the top. And the great thing about these uh, sugar smoothers is they're frosted. There's a little bit of a texture to them, so they won't stick to your fondant, which is great. Even if it's a little damp and sweaty. If it does get too wet, I like keeps a like a sugar a nylon stocking full of cornstarch that I can just kind of rub my, over my fondant to dry it out if I need to. All right. So that looks good to me. Nice, sharp, pretty edge. And so now, this is my favorite thing to do with these guys. I use this to laser cut the bottom edge of my cake. Um, I used to always struggle with wheel tools because you have to leave a skirt and you can't go right next to it. And these, you can actually smooth and cut the fondant at the same time. So I'm gonna go back to fondant smoother in one hand, sugar smoother in the other. And I start gentle, just going back and forth. You can do right-handed, left-handed. And if you look, as I'm smoothing, it's just gently cutting the bottom edge right next to the cake. And the best way to do it is just to do it gradually. If you try and like kind of push it like this, you'll end up with a edge that will retract and it won't be as smooth and pretty as you can get. Just take your time. It's kind of relaxing just to kind of smooth away. Smooth and cut, smooth and cut. And then once you can see the table through the fondant, just break it, pull it back, and ta-da, perfect, beautiful laser edge, ready to be stacked, ready to be gunged, ready to go. And there you go, guys, covering a cake and fondant. Hope you enjoyed and learned something. So practice, 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 and you'll be an awesome fondant cover too. Bye.